We'll just need slight adjustment. This is pointing to the heavens, the referee. I think he, I don't think he's looking for divine intervention. I think he's to get the uh, the overhead layouts set up. That's what he that's what he want, was looking for. It's quite a good system, actually, this one, because, as you can see, when the balls are flashing, that means that they're back exactly where they were. So it's a handy guide for the referee. Very slight adjustment required. So what you're saying is that when the, uh, the ball is in the right spot, it will start uh, to flash. Well, I the believe that's the case, yeah. yeah no, it's, it's, it's a good system. I like it. And, uh, you know, that it is taking a while, and, of course, that is the one problem we have with, with all of these replacements. That they can take a long time. So it's not necessarily cutting down the amount of time between shots, but I didn't think it was a particularly big adjustment to make because the, the pink just brushed into the other reds. No, it's the cue ball is the other issue. I think he's got to make sure that he's got the same shot to the left cushion. Played a lot better that time. I think Judd Trump has just pointed out that the scoreboard in the arena is actually wrong and that points have gone on Rory Thor's score. The score you can see on your screen is correct. So it's a 52-point deficit for Trump with 67 now on the table. Yeah, I mean, Trump will still fancy winning this frame where the balls are and it might be a decisive frame, actually, so early when uh, Thor was in with this break, which he couldn't help himself getting further out of position until he broke down. Be another test of Trump's overall queuing. Again, it's a shot he would absolutely devour at his best, but as you can see, he queues a bit offline on these and brings the queue across the last moment, and in it goes. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. One. It's a style all his own, but it's devastatingly effective. And certainly that aspect of his game has been right on the money again this season in a way that it wasn't for a lot of last season. Well, I've seen him take on a long red, and there's two reds almost next to each other. I mean, when you're behind the line, you actually don't even know which red he's going to play until he switches at the last second. It's an extraordinary cue action. No. And uh, as we've seen, when it's working, he is, I mean, he's as good as anybody in the world. There's no doubt about that. And as you say, this will certainly hurt Rory Thor if Trump would clear up here and you'd rather be in his shoes right now, even though he's still 36 adrift. Nothing safe. These are the frames that 17. often do feel as though they're worth more than the frame itself. Psychological damage they can inflict. Because Thor was going so nicely, got in with that brilliant long red and a couple of excellent retrieving shots as well, but couldn't quite get over the line. 24. Well, this is the shot, I think, because he'll definitely free the other red, which is the only possible safe ball. He doesn't want the red to go into a place where it doesn't pot. Does it go past the yellow into the left top pocket? I think it's quite important as to, to whether it does or not. Well, have a great impact on who wins the frame. Well, he must think it does because he's played in behind it. Thirty-two. 
Thank you, sweetie. Forty-two. Forty-six. Yeah, I think the disappointment is obvious. Sitting quite a long way back in that chair, isn't he? He's not lost the frame yet. Because getting on the pink is not simple. And there you see the point. 51. If he was straight on the pink, rolling through on the black is pretty easy now. Well, I mean, if he could play it with left-hand side, it would be a, become a missable pot, but it might be the best way of getting on the black. Beautiful shot. He played it into the thin side of the pocket. It's an excellent clearance, this. That was very missable, wasn't it? using side on the cue ball but he negotiated it well and that is a punishing clearance an outstanding break acknowledged by this crowd here in new shan and chad trump strikes a very important blow early in this first round match at the world open he leads rory thought 2-0 it looked lightly that his opponent would equalize so 2-0 to trump five is the target for a place in the last 64 here in new shan and a meeting with Sanderson Lam, who earlier today got the better of the Chinese wildcard Gong Chen Ji by five frames to four. Other winners in the earlier session, the world champion Luca Brussel over Manasaw and Fet Malaikal, Ali Carter over Louis Heathcote, Hossein Vafai over Graham Dot, the third frame. and Jordan Brown over Lan Yu Hao. So Rory's got to put that disappointment behind him. Easier said than done as he breaks off in frame three. And what he didn't need was bringing a red up the table off his break and giving Trump an immediate in in this third frame. That's what he's done. Oh, but Trump's overcut it by quite a margin. So that's a let off for the Malaysian. Yeah, I mean, it's something that you see a lot, that red drifting up the table. I guess it can sometimes work in your favour. <laughs> Although, I don't know, if, can he cut this in? It's quite thin. Maybe not. Clearly, he didn't think he could anyway. I think one thing to say already, which I have noticed, um, and it, a lot depends on it, is when Judd Trump's long game is in shape, he's a completely different snooker player. And he's knocked in a couple of really good long pots today already. Tell me that he is queuing well enough. Yes, he was disappointing in Riyadh. Losing to uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, the way that he played was didn't do himself justice, quite honestly. But I'm not sure what he's done since then, but he looks to be queuing well, stealing that second frame in the way that he did. Talking of Ronnie O'Sullivan, he'll be in action tomorrow in the later session from 11.30 UK time. As Trump gets in. We're done without that little cannon, though. As Sullivan's playing Michael One. White in his first match here. Yeah, of course, interestingly, yeah, it's not a first-round match, is it? Because uh, Sullivan played a qualifier Rambo. in Barnsley for this. I mean, it, 
quite how he was asked to play that match, I'll never know one. because he, he's a world number one, very popular player in these parts. And he was, for whatever reason, asked to play that qualifier, which he, he probably not something he wanted to do, particularly against Alfie Burden. So it's a round two match, which, as I say, is the uh, first time I think O'Sullivan's played in one of those qualifying venues for a long time and won. One. And Michael White, who he's playing, you know, I mean, he's capable of beating him uh, on his best. You know, he's a ranking tournament winner. I'm not sure saying he will beat him, but it's not impossible that he could. It's an absolutely stunning pot. I mean, surely he's on something he deserves to be because he's absolutely crunched that pink to the middle. It's a hard player to read. Seven. You, know, you could argue that he's a little unlucky to be 2 0 down and missed a rest shot towards the end of that 57 break. But somehow he's not on a red here, and I think that. That shot he played on the pink deserved a, a better result than that. Rory four, seven. Keeble just drifted a little further than he would have wanted it to. He might be able to put the left hand red of the three that he's quite close to. See no reason why he wouldn't take it on and head down the table anyway. Well, he's played it even better, holding for the black. That's a terrific shot. I mean, he plays absolute humdingers of shots interspersed with you know some positional errors, but he, he really can play. It's a good shot, that, the hole for the black there. Good start for Alan Taylor against one of the players of the season in Zhang Anda. 2-1 to Taylor. <coughs> Lucas Kleckers and Dominic Dale are level at one all. Joe Eight. Perry now leads Sean O'Sullivan 2-0. One each between Stuart Carrington and David Lilly. Likewise, Si Jai Wee and Long Zhuang. And as mentioned previously, no. Sean Murphy 2-1 up on Siu Sir after Siu's clearance when it looked as though Murphy might be going 3-0 up on table two. That's on Discovery Plus. Touching ball. Seventeen. Back of what happened in frame two, he really has to make this into a, a frame winning chance now. I know this is obvious, but he, he can't afford to be in with chances like this and not clinch the frame. But he's unconventional. One of these players, you never quite know what he's going to do next. 24. Thirty-one. 
32. Struck it well to give him an option of uh, red to left middle or 39. had the keyboard gone any further, red to left corner. Six. Forty-seven. seen of these pockets they're not uh, they're not tight 54 that winning comes a bit off the bottom jaw and the pink that uh, Trump potted towards the end of frame two is a great shot to hold for the black but I know for sure that it was in at the time 55 so I think Perfect response to the disappointment of losing 62. the previous frame to that outstanding clearance of 64 from Trump. He does seem to be possessed of a very even temperament. He doesn't give much away, Rory. 63. Clearly a very dangerous player because he has that ability to sort of burst into life. Pop some amazing balls. I think the other thing that... Um makes him a dangerous player is his unpredictability you don't know what he's what shot he's going to play you know i say i saw him make the most incredible 69 break to beat daniel wells in a decider in the scottish open it was just from from where he was i don't know how he made the first red never mind 70. clear the table and uh this is what he's a sort of player he is he'd have to be at his best today but you know he doesn't look anything but he pops a, an incredible ball First term pro a decade ago. He's only made 18 centuries as a professional, but four of those have come this season. 77. His first season back. Relegated back in 2020. And that's a nice shot. Yes, the frame is one, but what a good break this has been in the circumstances. Could now be looking at a 2-1 lead, but we'll just be pleased to have responded to losing the second frame on the final black. Suspect he'll try and get the angle to knock the other red out down the cushion, but as a right handed player, of course, he could play on it. 86. Playing behind it, but uh, I get the feeling that he's going to try and move the red on this shot. Yeah, 
Yeah, didn't make a great effort to do so. He might as well have played on it down the cushion. 93. Get a, an idea how easy they are to pot down the cushion from this. If he gets close to it, he already missed an important rest shot in frame two, which eventually cost him the frame. Well, that's if that goes in, then we're all in Roll trouble. <laughs> Terrific break, though. It was an excellent break. A really good response from Rory Thor. A run of 93 to get himself involved in this first round match at the World Open. So Judd Trump pegged back here. And Yushan now leading Rory Thor by two frames to one. Judd Trump to break. So the final frame before the mid-session interval and Rory Thor will be feeling a whole lot better for winning the third frame, not just winning it, but winning it in style with that excellent break of 93 after Trump had stolen the second. Their first meeting. Sanderson Lamb awaiting the winner after his victory in the earlier session against Gong Chen Ji in a decider. And Trump back in. It's another big money event, this. 170,000 goes to the winner on Sunday. 815,000 on offer in all. 5,000 for the highest break. Marco Fu is currently top of that tree, having made 139 in a losing cause against Dominic Dale in qualifying in Barnsley. And no one has been more prolific than Judd Trump in the break building department this season. He's made 68 and is now just 31 shy of 1,000 for his career. When you consider he turned pro in 2005, that is some return. Does it go on its spot or below the spot? If it went below the spot, it would make getting the bunch open a little awkward. But it looks to me as if that marker suggests it won't actually go on there. Tight one, though, isn't it? Because as you can see, the, that point on the marker, if that hit the middle of the spot, it would go on there. It's not, if it's touching the red, that's no good. It'll have to go somewhere else. Uh, what's he doing here, this referee? He's using his glove to... And he seems to have done the job perfectly. So, getting the bunch open might be a shade easier, either from the blue or from the black. Depending on where he finishes, but it won't be this shot where he splits the bunch. If he goes up for the blue here, and with the pink almost touching the reds, you feel that screwing 18. into the pink from the blue is, is going to be opening the reds up really well. It's gone a bit far. 19. You can still play this shot. I think the angle is coming into this bunch. He's going to have to hit this hard. These reds could go absolutely everywhere here. He hasn't really got into him at any speed. I'm surprised by that. 24. Still got a couple of options to the right corner.
25. Referee just trying to stop people from walking behind the line of the shot unsuccessfully because it was a stream of people doing exactly that. Well, it must be tight. The uh, red must go through the gap here. Now, the uh, referee was going to put the pink in a place where nothing would have gone, but he realised in the yellow spot was free. 36. Judd Trump is now fifth in the all-time list of ranking event winners with the four he's won this season, taking him to 27. Were he to retain his World Open title this week, he would tie the legendary Steve Davis on 28. With only Higgins, Hendry, 44. and O'Sullivan ahead of him. And he's still only 34. Sixty. Well, if you can roll this in, because uh, it would be frame ball. Eight. So, an excellent break, this. It's actually been a very high-quality mini session of snooker. The first frame was a bit scratchy, which... 75. Trump won in bits and pieces, but since then... Impressive stuff. 59 from Rory Thor in the second frame, but then the stealing 64 clearance from Trump. 93 from Thor 76. to make it... 2-1, and now this from Trump again to re-establish control of this match and put himself within two frames of round two. 81. Now closing in on century number 69 this season. Came only the second player after Neil Robertson to make a century of centuries 82. in a single campaign. I guess he's going to have to go some from here to replicate that feat 89. this season, but who knows the way Trump scores. He'd have to have a very good world championship, put it that way, wouldn't it? Be there all the way to the end and 90. make an awful lot of breaks. But this has been a superb one so far. Superb break. Uh, it's been a quite entertaining four frames. Rory Thor, you could argue 99. that he should be two each or he... He could it comfortably have won frame two, which he never. But uh, I suppose that another way of looking at it would be that 3-1 is about right. On the balance of play, Trump's looking dangerous. The long game is in shape, and his great building is pretty good as well. 103.
105. One hundred eight. Well, that brown went into that pocket, but uh, we saw the yellow go in earlier on in the, the break, a couple of shots previously, and it, it, and how it dropped. So th these tables aren't tight, but uh, not to, to take anything away from this break from Trump. It's been absolutely superb. The way that he's controlled it, measured performance so far. And you've got to be quite impressed with him. Doesn't always play well in the early rounds of an event, even if he wins them. Immaculate from Trump, a 130 total clearance. The crowd enjoyed that. Century number 970 for his career, the 69th of his outstanding season, and the four times ranking titleist during this campaign, has started very nicely in his bid to retain his World Open title, which he last won, and he stepped in with a break of 64 for 2 nil, and now it's 3-1. We're back underway. Rory Thor with a 93 to close to 2-1 after the disappointment of losing that second frame, which he will feel he should have won. And then, of course, Trump responding with something even better, a superb total clearance of 130 to put himself two away from a second round meeting with Sanderson Lam, who won earlier today against Gong Chenji of China. Trump has looked good much as he's done for almost all of this season. Seven finals, four titles, says it all. Some way off with that one. Other scores in this session, Lucas Kleckers leads Dominic Dale, 2-1. Joe Perry has raced into a 4-0 lead over Sean O'Sullivan. It's two each between Stuart Carrington and David Lilly. Likewise between Si Jai Wei and Long Zhuang. Alan Taylor leads the international championship winner and English Open runner-up Zhang Ander by three frames to one. Not the best safety, but no... Obvious damage done for Rory Thor. <coughs> In one of our features on Discovery Plus, my story so far, Judd Trump was talking about how his game has evolved over the years when he first came on the scene having had a wonderful junior career. He was all about the blazing potting, break building, but of course, since then, he's added a lot more strings to his bow. His safety game is right up there with the very best these days. And of course, you need that side of the game. Oh, goodness, that's gone horribly wrong for Rory. He's caught the green there in looking for the thin edge of the red. Now, what's the damage? Difficult to tell from that camera angle. Shake of the head from Rory. He doesn't give much away, but that shot certainly went awry, and he has left this red for Trump. And there have been times when Trump has had to use that safety game in recent One. seasons. He's not always played his very best snooker, but he's found ways to win tight matches time and time again, often from losing positions by digging in. So he's more than capable of the gritty match play when required. <laughs> 
Well, there's all the Q power that he possesses, taking him around the angles. I don't know if he played exactly there, but he'll settle for being on that red. Three. Four. Has he gone far enough? He's looking at uh, that. I think he might just be on it, but it's a question of then the pink will go on the black spot. And where's the next red coming from after that? I think that's the problem. Again, that whip, whippy cue action that he's got, taking it right round the angles, but I'm not sure he's on anything very easily. There might be a red that goes to left corner. The second one of the two close together, but otherwise it could be that he's got to play up the table. And I think that red does go. Just see enough of it, perhaps. Very good, isn't it? Very, very good. See that shot go in and develop other reds. Just got to get from colour to red here. And you feel that he would have done all the hard work in this break and made it very manageable. His next shot's got to be right. Well, <laughs> again, not quite where he wanted to be. Red to middle, perhaps, going into the bunch. Not a particularly nice shot to have to play, but I think it's all he's left with. The two-ball plant isn't quite on. He might be able to straighten it, but he'd have to catch the first red thinner than the potting angle if he was playing it on its own. So he's got to straighten this one. Which he's done very successfully. He just can't quite get himself into full positional mode here. The pockets have looked relatively inviting so far, but that pink was always just a little too high for Trump. That break was a real trial for him, trying to get back into prime position. It never quite happened, so has to settle for 20. This frame feels like a must-win for Rory Thorpe. Three down with four to play, the way Trump's queuing at the moment would be a very tall order. One. But he's shown that he is capable of taking a chance like this, that excellent break of 93 in the third frame after just missing out in the second. Yeah, but he's got to find a way of taking advantage of this chance, which has come about somewhat surprisingly. Uh, assuming that the pink does not go on its own <coughs> spot, crucially. Yeah, it's still covered because, of course, this, that would not suit Rory had it gone to his own spot. Where it is, it's a really good chance. Eight. Sloppy shot there just to finish a ball's width short of being the right angle on the pink. Should still get it, but he didn't want to be this sort of cut back with the key ball cutting it into other reds. However, he controlled it nicely. 14.
15. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Well, of course, it would usually be the blue up there, but he's, he's just off straight anyway. I think he has the angle to get down towards the red from it, from the black. It's pretty conducive to big scoring this table, I think, what I've seen. And the Sean Murphy match next door against Zeus, uh, equally so. So we are going to see the brakes flooding in, I think, this week on the conditions. Right now, a break of about 60 or 70 is what uh, Roy Thor's looking for. No, he's not looking for anything that's even much bigger than that. He needs this frame. 31. Thirty-seven. No, I don't think this red being potted frees the pink spot. It's the other red that's covering the pink, so that it will stay where it is. Don't think that will go on there. Just looking down the other line, so it will stay on the black spot. Crucially. Checking the scores. Three reds in the middle of the table will take him to enough points. If he takes high value colour, three reds and blacks, for instance, there'd be 48 in it with just the two reds over on the right side to worry about. So he can get the frame one here. Certainly keep the match alive. 45. side but this time positionally this is absolutely perfect and it's another shot from Rory Thor where you I mean you couldn't hit any balls any harder without almost breaking the pocket there absolutely exploded into the middle pocket that one Kimball lovely shot round the angles an unpredictable player it doesn't look much but he can play incredible shots as we were saying earlier Not such good shots, and he's miles away from position there. Nice. What did he even play? If he played out onto the red to the left middle, he was an absolute uh, country mile away from where he meant to be. He's finished nowhere. That was a dreadful positional shot. He's li likely to knock this in, though, given the sort of player he is. is what I'm saying about him. He, he just can't work him out. But you could build up hope and say, right, he's going to miss in a minute. And then he plays a, a, as good a shot there as, as bad the previous one was. So he's got to the point of a snooker required anyway. So he's done well. Holding this red will secure the frame. 67. For sure.
Rory Thorne, 67. It's a good break of 67, not least that retrieving pot just now on the red, which means that Trump needs a snooker to tie. But it is just the one snooker, so this frame not quite one yet. Trump having missed a pink on 20, it wasn't easy by any means. And he's overcooked that, so this is a chance for Thor to kill this frame off. If this res goes in, then surely it is going to be 3-2. And he's back in the match. He is a terrific potter, isn't he? And a lot of these pots have been going right in the middle. He's also got a good temperament, I think. I don't think he's easily phased by the odd mistake that he does throw in from time to time, as he did just now in losing position on the red, just got down and knocked it in. Could have been hurt by losing the second frame, but responded no. with a 93. So he is a dangerous player, for sure. He is, and uh, a 3-2 down. He's in this match with some sort of a chance still, even though I do like the way that Trump is playing. No, it's been an entertaining five frames. Judd Trump remains in his chair, and Rory Thor is back in contention. That was a must-win frame, and he has won it, helped by an excellent 60-plus break to close the gap to three frames to two. Beating Tep Charan New in the title Six. match. 3-1 up on Malaysia's Rory Thor. 3-2, I should say. Thor having just won the fifth frame. Nice break from him to stay in touch after Trump got in initially, missed a pink on 20. Later on, Ding Zhengui against Zach Shurti, Daniel Wells against Mark Allen, two times World Open champion. That's on table two from 11.30 UK time. got to be watchful here, isn't he, Trump? He, it's nothing worse than a difficult opening match in the tournament. He, he, he might fancy going on to win. So Rory Thorne got this to three all, then, of course, he can certainly win from there. And Judd Trump being one of the, the more likely winners this week, he'd hate to go out in the first round. Everyone's got their own issues, of course. Rory looking to... Get some form going into the World Championships as well. One. Which he's had an unsuccessful season, apart from, as we mentioned earlier, the Scottish. Going on some matches. Lose into the eventual winner in Scotland. Four, four, one. Gary Wilson, of course, he seems to have that tournament in his pocket the last two seasons up in Edinburgh. Thor did make the third round, the round of 32 of this tournament back in 2016 when he beat Jack Lazowski along the way. Yeah, as I said earlier, I think Trump's long game is good. He's obviously not playing that one with 
backspin or stun, which are even more difficult queuing shots, but he's knocked in a few today. This will be tough. Yellow down for the Reds. <laughs> well, it looks like he's on... Three. He might be on one red, but more likely on, on nothing. In fact, not a very favourable kiss. You can see that Red is closer to covering the red to the right corner. Jia Chong, three. See the expression on Rory Thor's face there. He got close to that long red. Trump eyeing up a possible plant. Didn't look entirely convinced that it went. No, I think that the red to the right might just be in the way of the path of the two reds. Might still go, but it's possible that the red is intervening on the right side, but just throw them offline. Sometimes with these plants, I have to say, the only time you really know is after you've played the shot, which can be too late. Is the red in the way? Yeah, threw it totally offline. <laughs> well, there's one way which he absolutely knew nothing about. And one. Roy thought nonplussed. <laughs> That's one way of putting it, yeah. If looks could kill, Rory would have a victim there. Could have done without that. Up against one of the best players in the world. Doesn't need Trump fluking a red like that. How expensive is it going to be for him? Well, th there's your answer. It's only cost him one point. He hit him there very hard, wasn't he? And I suppose it's like anything, these pockets might be fairly favourable. But uh, it's more that he was really queuing off the cushion at pace. You can lose all your accuracy. So the fluke actually, in, in a roundabout way, helped Thor. Trump a little bit concerned now, the way this match is starting to develop. One. Three. Well, the, with the black a little awkward, it's not going to be easy, but the pink and the red surrounding it means it's still a good chance. Four. Absolutely in the clear, both sides. I think he 
not going to be too ambitious here. Just chip away on reds and pinks and see how far this break can go. Can do a lot of damage here at this visit. 11. Seventeen. Eighteen. Yeah, just screwed a little further than an angle being straight and allows him to get in behind the two reds comfortably. Going about his business here, and as I say, belying his position in the rankings. I know he's his first year of a two year card, so your ranking is always going to be a little lower than it might end up because he's only got one season's points to go on, but he hasn't done much apart from that Scottish Open. He's barely, barely won a match, quite honestly, since uh, getting in Q School via the Asia Oceana Tour. First. Q school event, of course, with previous experience on the tour, that will help him. But the results have not really been coming. Thirty one. Thirty-two. Thirty-eight. So it can get very close to winning the frame with two more red colours, but not actually winning it without the four reds, which are all completely safe coming into play. For now, though, I don't think you should be worrying too much about those. Good shot to finish top side of the blue there. Forty-four. Forty-five. Well, I think he feels that the black goes, and of course, with the angle he's got on it, he might disturb the reds. Although. He's likely to double kiss the reds. He's not certain he'll knock them into play here. Maybe one will pop, and that's uh, going to be an important one with a colour to follow 52. it. It would be enough to get him across the line in the frame. That was never in, as you saw. I wondered if it still might find a way of falling in, but I think rightly it didn't. But what a chance Trump's got out of nowhere. This is not going to be an easy chance because of the two reds. But it's a, a way back into the frame, which he didn't see coming. One. Shades of the second frame when Rory Thor made 59. Couldn't quite close it out. Trump stepped in with a superb 64 clearance. For 2 0. 
What a good shot that is. It's so easy to get stuck behind that first red on that shot. And really, it's not quite plain sailing because he's got a red on the cushion, but it's no. a wonderful chance to steal a frame. He never looked likely to win. Seventeen. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Yeah, just glided down the cushion. <coughs> Two ways of going here. You could just roll it in off one cushion or stun it around two and come in behind the yellow. I think he's playing the run through just one cushion, but you're coming across the face of the yellow a bit. Judge it though, absolutely A1. 32. Difficult moments for Rory. He was looking good there to level the match and make Trump's life very uncomfortable, but he's now. Very concerned that he's going to be two down with three to play. Perfectly. You know, dare I say the last thing perhaps that could have gone wrong in this break would have been that, but. Still going to take the easy feel position in behind the blue would seal this clearance. And that looks absolutely 41. perfect. It's the tight frames that make all the difference in matches like this. Thor won frame three with a break of 93. Trump made 130 total clearance, but 46. it's these frames that feel more significant. It was looking likely to be three all just now. Fifty two. But with this black, it'll be a second black ball steal of the match for Judd Trump. And that is the difference between being four two adrift and within one frame of victory at four two up. And that's where the defending world open champion is right now. Punishing Rory Thor again to lead 4-2. Still waiting for Rory Thor to return to the arena. He disappeared for a while, didn't he, early in the match? And, uh, well, hopefully he'll come back. He must be disappointed, though, Neil, to have lost that sixth frame in the way he did. Oh, goodness me, yeah. How he lost it, I don't know, because uh, he never looked like uh, breaking down. Then he missed a, a red, and it was sort of the last piece of the jigsaw for him, really. But anyway, he missed it. He saw the clearance, and he's been gone an eternity now. So I'm sure he'll be back and he'll regroup, but he's got a lot to do from here. But uh, I think Trump has played pretty well. I, I do like the way that he's played. He's, the way that he's stolen two frames, fully in the belief that he would steal them. From seven, Rory Thor to break. So the point of no return for the Malaysian back on tour this season by Q School, of course, after four years away. 4-2 down, the first to five to play Sanderson Lamb in the last 64. And again, Rory Thor bringing a red up the table. And this time, Trump has got the cut that he was looking for. He overcut one from a similar scenario earlier in the match. One. But back in straight away in his bid to close this match out. 
Yeah, I don't think you can afford to keep leaving that red on from the break-off shots. And this is not the first time, as you pointed out, that Rory had done that today. First time Trump actually overcut the red, but more often than not, you're leaving your opponent straight in. Well, that's not what he was looking for. He wanted to, I think, miss the reds altogether there and just finish Five. in behind the one on the uh, bottom of the bunch into the right corner. So it may not be costly because I think the safety shot's coming here. Jeff Chong, five. He's at it again, isn't he? Potting balls that you don't expect him to. Good red that. Played it quite aggressively to bounce the cue ball away from the cushion. Now, brown to middle, only short of finish on a to pop this. Slightly Five. in between on the next red, however. He's got a red to the right corner, but he's just got to get control of the cue ball as well on the shot to get the right side of his next colour. Not too bad. Six. Scoring hasn't been Thor's problem today. He's made four breaks in excess of 50. The 93, the best in the third frame, but of course he made 52 in the previous one. It's been killing frames off that has been more of a challenge for him and he's been punished on two occasions for failing to do that. That's why he's in this predicament as he goes into the reds. Not with any great pace though. Looks like end of break. Yeah, no, it seems like he had to play the shot a little differently to the way he did, I thought. I think you go two down with three to play. Whatever's gone before, you, you've got to be aggressive in your shot selections at that point. Try and find a way back into the match. Rory Thor. 11. Uh, in the end, he's played a good safety shot, but he'd be annoyed that uh, the break didn't amount to anything more than that. Just a handful of points. shot to, totally is played just to shape the cue ball in behind there blocking off the left side of the table I don't know if he's got complete cover on the right side referee Wang Wei just having a little look down the line of the shot playing twice across to the bottom red and he's played it well
Well, Rory Thor's got a shot at this uh, this red that you can see on the left side from that view. He's got the safety shot on the red on the right side. But I think he can get to the potting angle. It looks fairly straightforward from that viewpoint. But at the cue ball, I mean, it's hard to know exactly where it would finish if the pot was made and it's not hanging over the pocket and it's playing up to it. Very, very dangerous again. Easy to have just played a safety shot there. It's not how Judd wanted to do things. He wanted to take a red on. Awkward queuing to the middle pocket. Cue ball just nudging into the brown ball. Three. Well played again, a little delicate shot. The pink will go to the right corner if you can get behind it, but not clearly on the next shot. But it's worth noting that it does pot. Next few shots are pretty important because there's a chance he could get the match one here. Four. Well, the pink spot is free now. You might just play on the red down the cushion because they're going along there all right. Interesting shot to play the cannon to move it out. I think he tried either that or he played on the red. Just above 17. and to the left of the pink. Either way, the break's 18. still happening. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Might as well play a little cannon here. Yeah, nicely done. Things are just falling into place quite nicely for Trump. Should he win this match 5-2? Scoreline... It either slightly flatters him or it does a bit of a disservice perhaps to Rory Thor would be more apt 21. because Trump has taken the frames when they've had the chance. But uh, Rory Thor really has missed the boat a little bit. Yes, Thor has played pretty well. It's just that Trump has been that bit more clinical in two frames. And that's really made the difference. It's been a high quality match, actually. Trump has played very nicely, but that killer instinct that he has, born of being a serial winner, looks like being the difference in this match. And he feels like a few minutes ago that Thor was pretty close to three each, and now Trump is equally close to a 5 2 victory. That's how quickly things can change. Still some work to do, though. 31 in front. We'll be heading over to table two for the finale of Sue Sir and Shaw Murphy at the conclusion of this match, if indeed it does end 
here and now, but Trump's body language suggests 45. that that may have gone wrong. Can he get through to the red? I think he just about can with a trace of right-hand side. And when you're close to the ball, it, you can normally get that side on OK. 46. But he's getting a little awkward. He couldn't really control it for position because he was using side. Now, probably with the right hand, he'll play this shot. And of course, he's missable. It's thin. Beautifully played. 46 the lead, so a red and a blue would be enough for Trump. And obviously, 53. pink and black equally good. So Trump on the cusp here of clinching victory. Match ball. And he's taken these well, and it's been really the pattern of the match. Trump clinical when he's had the opportunity to do the damage, stealing two frames on the black. 60. Yeah, and both of the frames he shouldn't really have won at all. So, you know, if you, if you were to just see that differently, you, you'd have a scoreline where Rory Thor would be in front 4-3 rather than about to shake hands having lost 5-2. So it's unfortunate because he's played quite well. It's been that aw awkward sort of a end of frame scenario for him a few times. Just a question now, then, as to whether Trump can finish this match with a second century. 130 total clearance already. And I think he'll be pretty happy with the start to his title defence. It's been a long time coming, of course, five years ago that he beat Tepchire for this title. He's won in Wuhan already this season, his sixth 81. ranking event claimed in China. Rory Thor, I think, can be happy with his performance, but frustrated nonetheless that it could have been a whole lot closer than it's turned 83. out to be. Certainly acquitted himself well, and a reminder of what a dangerous player he can be. He's a fantastic unorthodox, but 86. he can be very effective, and... He might have made life a good deal more uncomfortable for Trump had he taken those chances when he was in. But Trump has played very well. He'll be more than satisfied with his afternoon's work here in Yushan. Just this pink for career century 971. And the 70th of the campaign for Trump. He has been prolific once again in that department. Four ranking titles. And he's cleared the table to finish the match in style. A terrific match, full of high-quality snooker. Judd Trump with a clinical performance. That's very much been the story of his season. With four titles and seven finals. And he's got his World Open title defence off to a terrific start here in Yushan. He's defeated Malaysia's Rory Thor by five frames to two. The players sharing a debrief at the end of the match. Trump threw to round two.